What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? We've been tagged. Do you nerd for gaming memories? That's right, we were tagged by Generation Pixel. Each, and the last couple, well, none other than Do You Nerd? So Tom, Lacey, five games each, five, your top five memorable. About top 10 gaming memories, and we really didn't know what to do, and we thought, you know what, hey, let's just not say anything, and maybe people will forget about it. That <laughs> didn't work. But then, <laughs> someone said something about it. Whoops. Retro Rivals. He tagged us along with two other couples. Yes. Quapple Nerds and Dude Nerd. Nerd. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for reminding them. <laughs> Seriously, though, we honestly could not think of what to talk about this because we've covered a lot of gaming memories and we didn't want to rehash the same old, same old. Throughout the years, we've done plenty of collabs with people around the holidays, yeah, especially, especially, but revisiting, uh, you know, like top. 10 things for you know nes or super nintendo or you know games we grew up with so yeah trying to go back and think of stuff that we haven't covered mm -hmm. a few times over it was really really tough here's what we've come up with though lady lacy and i have gone around the game room and we've picked a few things out now she has grabbed five games for me to uh, hopefully have some kind of story with and i've grabbed just five things for her to hopefully have some kind of story with. Yeah, we put them in bags so we couldn't even see <laughs> what the other grabbed. You open your bag. What's in your bag? But this way uh, we can kind of take something out of the bag, hand it off and be like, all right, let's see if you got a story for this. So I'm going to throw you out there. You're going first. Oh, I'm going first. Putting you right on the spot. You always go ladies first. So I was like, does that mean I'm guessing first or, or not guessing, but talking first? Or well, showing? is it show and tell? Well, First of all, one thing that I, I feel like you've got to have something that you can tell us about. It oh. doesn't even have to be this guy in particular. Ba -ba -bomb. <laughs> so uh, there was one year I decided that I wanted to learn how to make these little crocheted creatures. I see them all the time online and I was like, you know what? I love crocheting, but I can crochet a blanket. I can crochet a mean rectangle, people. <laughs> so I thought, let's try to, you know move it up a notch so i i taught myself how to make these and i made i made you a slime i made mm -hmm. some one-up mushrooms um and then i made this bob -omb. and i loved it because he's got his little his little curl here and then his little his little wind up thing back there so this is ridiculously <laughs> adorable i love this uh, i, I mean i love all of them but this one just came yeah. out so well i love this one with all the detail and but i've but, always liked the bombs they've always been so cute i think it's this thing that i like the best back there by the way guys this woman loves to say that she's not creative and she can't do anything creative okay i can't create something out of thin air <laughs> i am wonderful at copying things and this was something i copied a pattern off of. <laughs> nice nice she had a story for it i did all, all right. right oh boy what's she gonna do to me well this one is something that you started off with having a history with and then we had a history with okay so oh my gosh <laughs> Oh, I should have known yeah. you would pick something like this. <laughs> Friday the 13th. Okay, on NES. I get it. You know, there are a lot of people that like to go back and say this game isn't as bad as people made it out to be. I, I do agree that a lot of the reason why people trash this game is because of the angry video game nerd. And to be fair, if you had the manual growing up and everything, it does make it a little more clear what you're supposed to do because the game itself is not. I hate this game. Now, I you're despise a huge it. fan of the franchise. I am. Which is kind of leads into why you don't uh, like yeah, the game. Yeah, and that's that's part of the problem. Now, see, on the cover here, this Jason <laughs> Voorhees, this is part seven, which means they had seven films to draw inspiration from. Now, I get that there's not a whole lot that you could do with the limitations of the NES, but I still think that they could have made a much better game than what they did. And this does not feel like a Friday the 13th game. To me, it feels like a different game that they slapped a license onto. And hey, that's fine. You know, they probably made some bucks from it. Growing up, 
I didn't know what I expected from a Friday the 13th game, but it wasn't this. I wanted a little more. I feel like you could have done, uh, you know, maybe some more like stealth aspect to it. I know that wasn't a big deal in 8-bit games, but maybe have some elements of cat and mouse where you're trying to avoid Jason, you know. You have to like work your way through a, a forest maze, you know, without running into Jason. And not a forest maze in, oh, this screen looks exactly like the other 17 screens talking like an actual maze or something uh but i feel like there's so much more that they could have done there was a time when i used to collect these friday the 13th cartridges and i will tell you i would destroy them i would find fun and creative ways to destroy them because i wanted to get rid of as many of them as possible now when i say that i think i ultimately destroyed like four or something <laughs> and then when we got together i joined in yeah, you did. You did help me destroy a couple of these, but oh my gosh. The funny thing is, is when we first got together, you would find these for like five bucks. By the time we decided to stop doing that, they were like 12 or $13. So I think you're the reason they went up in price. <sighs> destroy Jason if you can. Uh, I, I could, and I did. Oh my God, I can't believe you did that to me. <laughs> You know what? You didn't say they had to be good memories. You know what? I grabbed this just on a whim. Now, I was going for things, but I did grab one game for you because I kind of thought it was a little bit funny the way this game would torture you. Mass Effect 3. <laughs> Were you a little bit of a fan of 2 especially? I loved 2. To so much that as soon as I was finished with it, I literally started it over and did. I've never done the game plus, and I did the game plus on that one because there were some choices that I made the first time around that I didn't like, and so I corrected those choices and uh, you know had so much fun playing it the second time around. So I was super excited when this one came out, and it was just not the same because you didn't have the band anymore. It was just, you know, they were all broke up and gone. And then in the end, I like to play kind of, I wouldn't say stealthy, but I liked, I always would choose the sharpshooter guns, like the, the sniper guns, and I would hide in the corners and shoot people while the rest of my team were like <laughs> Leroy Jenkins in and running in there and killing people. I hid back and I'd let them die and then I'd revive them. But the very end, you couldn't really do that. And I got very, very angry mm -hmm. a few times to the point where I would blush some sailors with my mouth. <laughs> and I know you guys don't believe me because you probably don't think I cussed, but I did. And a few times I had to get up and leave the room. Yeah, <laughs> I will say I have never, ever seen you so furious at a game yeah. as you were with this. That being said, I mad did it. respect, I did beat it. you finished this game. I did. It would have been so easy for you to just yep. say, you know what? No, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not having fun. <laughs> Put it on the shelf. I'm never yep. touching it but again. But I did. I did finally prevail. I died I a lot and revived a lot, but I did finally prevail. Let's just say I did not play the regame, the new game plus. <laughs> I have never played this game since then because I knew I could never handle that end battle. And it wasn't even the end end <laughs> battle. It was just one of the battles near the end. I think I think the end battle I was kind of more angry at because it was like nothing. It was like a piece of cake. And I don't know if it's just because I had so much trouble with the other battle. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, wait, that wasn't the end. So yeah. <laughs> well, there you, go. I got you can't do it. I can't. You are stressing me the hell. I stress you. I can't. You're not I'm not done. I'm all right, well, here's another one that's tied to us. Okay. Okay? Especially because something used to do in it to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, shortly after we became an item, <laughs> and I was getting her more into gaming with me, uh, I had her sit down and play Lego Star Wars. Now, you know, the whole thing behind that was she thought it was more for kids because of the the look of it. You know, yeah. I mean, the Lego games, they very much look like they're for a younger audience. So she wasn't too sure about it, but she had so much fun. And because we love Indiana Jones yes. stuff so much, when we found out that there was a Lego Indiana Jones game, we immediately had to get it. So we tracked it down, we got it, and we had a blast in this. 
mostly. <laughs> now, we often play these games as the characters that we, we like the most or, you know, that, that pair well with one another. For instance, I would be uh, Dr. Jones, of course. And you would be... I would be Willie or any of the other female characters. <laughs> <laughs> there is a very FUD for me mechanic <laughs> with Indy. If I take my whip and, and whip at the female character, it twirls around and draws them in and he kisses them. And then you can carry them around wrapped up in the whip. <laughs> and he would do that and not let me down and <laughs> irritate me sometimes. It was romantic. <laughs> yeah. We're recreating it. <laughs> sometimes if he decided he wanted to move on and I wasn't ready to move on, he would do that too. That is true because <laughs> this is before they Free would do split the, uh, the split screen. So you were stuck on the same screen. That was a change that they made in the series that was great. Also, just a heads up. I don't know if it would be with every copy or not, but for some reason we had the worst luck with the Wii. This, this game on the Wii would crash oh, so yeah. often. Lots of glitches. <laughs> mm. Okay, I think you're going to like sharing this memory. I don't know if you guys know this. We've only said it a couple dozen times. We have a full Amiibo figure collection. We do? Including one of her favorites. Rosie! I absolutely love Rosalina. She is my favorite uh, princess. And uh, this Amiibo was a lot of fun to go get because... This was one of my very first, it wasn't, it wasn't a midnight release, but it was like an early, early morning mm -hmm. pickup. And we drove over to Target because we knew they were going to have some. And there was... Mm. Now, this was at the time when she was like exclusive yes, to Target. Yes, she was exclusive to Target. Because they used to, oh, yeah, I hated the exclusive time. ones. And there was probably, I'd say about five cars in the parking lot. They were already in the parking lot. And I'm thinking, oh no. But there was no one in line. And I was like, what the heck? Why is nobody standing in line? The store wasn't open yeah, yet. Yeah, it was not name. open yet. And I was like, no way. I am not, not getting my Rosalina. So I parked the car and the two of us got out. It was a very cold morning. Mm -hmm. And I got out and I stood up by the door. It probably was maybe 30 seconds after we were standing at the, by the door. Every single car door opened and everybody got in line. <laughs> and so I made all these nerds get out of their car and come up there first and stand in line. in line. I was first in line. And they only had five of them. So it's a good thing yes. you did that. And they came out and they gave us each tickets. So if you didn't have a ticket, you didn't get a Rosie. And something we didn't know about, though, bonus, though, was that um, they had Chic. Yeah. And so they said, does anybody here want Sheik? And he raised his hand mm -hmm. and we pretended we weren't, you know, together or anything. So because they were limiting them at the they time. Were, too. Yes. And so and the funny thing is, as soon as they opened the doors, there were some of the people in the back who ran ahead of all of us in line thinking they could beat us and get us out of out of the way. But nope, we had the ticket. So we got her. Oh, <laughs> so sad. Sorry, buddy. You tried, but you failed. <laughs> so. This next one, there's a part in it that you talk about all the time in it that you just always seem to get really excited about when you talk about how fun this mechanic was. Okay. So that's why I chose this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Batman Returns. Let me tell you, I, I really enjoyed the movie. I loved it. I had a lot of fun with it. And this version, the Super Nintendo one, oh, I love this version. This is one of those games that has multiple endings based on the difficulty. And if you want the best ending, you have to do the highest level of difficulty to get those extra little cutscenes at the end. And it's not always easy. <laughs> you know, I don't know exactly which element you're thinking of that I bring up, because I probably talk about this a lot, but there are so many great things. The first level when you're fighting, the freaking clowns. Oh, there's so many great things that you can do. Batman can grab two of them and just bash their heads together, just <laughs> crunch. Or he can grab one and throw it into something in the background. You could throw them into a uh, street sign and there's like the satisfying bong sound. <laughs> you can throw them into park benches and they crack. You could throw them into glass and everything or into the buildings. And the sound, the sound is what sells it because I mean, it's just such a satisfying crunch. There's even a great moment in the first boss battle when you're trying to save the lovely Selena Kyle by Michelle Pfeiffer, where just like the movie, you could take, if you're quick enough, 
you could take your grapple gun, you could shoot the building right behind the clown that's holding her hostage and pull out a chunk of the wall and it'll take away a, a good portion of his health. Not a one-off knockout like in the movie, but it's so cool that they put it in there. I love that. And that's the one I like. That's the that's one. The okay, one. well, perfect. Oh. <laughs> This game is so much fun, and it looks so good, and the music's so good. I love Batman Returns. It's a fun one. Batman! <laughs> Alright, what's next? <laughs> well, I mean, it is more my thing, but I feel like you could do justice telling the story. Oh! <laughs> the book. The Books. books. What's so special about these books? Well, you uh, swiped these and uh, were able to purchase them out from under Pat Country. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very annoyed about that, too. So we were at a toy convention, no less, in uh, around the St. Louis area. We had just, uh, the day before, had gone to Mo Game Con, which is where Pat Country was. And we got to meet him and, you know, take pictures and talk to him and everything. Well, the very next day we found out there was a toy convention. So obviously, hello, toys. So we go there and he's looking around for some video games. He finds a couple booths here and there with video games. We didn't know Pat Contrary was going to be there, but I'm off at another booth. So uh, I wasn't around or anything to be able to, you know, shield him from, from Pat. But <laughs> basically Tom picks these up and he's like, oh, these are really cool. And so he's holding them, looking at other things. Uh, Holding them because 100% I'm going to yes. buy them. So go ahead, you finish. Oh, me? Well, yeah. so yeah, I, I picked them up because it's very cool. It's the Worlds of Power books, which, you know, they're they're basically books for young younger readers from Scholastic. And these would take you on adventures through the games, you know. So you've got uh, Blaster Master, Metal Gear, Ninja Gaiden, and Castlevania 2. But what was cool is the fact that they had this sleeve that collects these four books, which... I mean, I knew that was a special thing, but I also just wanted the books anyway. So, yeah, I'm, I'm carrying this because I'm getting this. There's no question about it. I'm getting it. I'm looking to see if I'm getting anything else. Pat comes up, and he's just hovering. Yeah, he will not leave Tom alone. He's like, oh, hey, what you got there? Oh, that's pretty cool. That's, that's, that's really neat, actually. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, hey, uh, I, I saw you at the show yesterday, right? Like, yeah. And then he just would not go away. Yeah. He would even like step away. And the woman that was running the table, he was whispering, he was talking to her. And I guarantee he was hovering around me, waiting for me to set them down so he could grab mm -hmm. them and telling her if I don't buy them that he will. Even at one point we had... Um... Oh, gaming historian, gaming historian Norm. Norm came over and Jay from Game Chasers came yeah. by. And they were even being like, Pat, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. And he'd be like, oh, in a minute, in a minute, I'll be right there. He would not leave. And yeah. Sure, nice. Why not? <laughs> so I want to say, this is Pat and yes, Punk Pat Conchie. You're watching Nerd on YouTube. I, I love telling that story because it's like, you know, I want him to pat. But honestly, it also comes down to the fact that, you know, I something caught my eye. I went with my gut. You know, I it didn't leave it choice. behind. I made sure to get it. And the fact that someone like him with such an impressive collection under yeah. his own repertoire, the fact that he was so interested in it, you know, it's like, oh, that's definitely <laughs> a good choice. <laughs> okay. Hey, this is kind of fun, actually. This is kind of fun. You get some stories. All right. Well... You've got some fun stories about this one, and we even played this together a little bit, but I like the stories you were telling about you, how you used to play it before we got together. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sims. <laughs> oh, you know, I had a character that was a psychopath. That's a Sim. So, the thing is, the first time I ever saw The Sims, it was on PC, and I thought, wow, this looks so cool. I didn't have a PC. I was at a friend's house. And I did have a PS2, and I really hoped that, you know, oh, that, that's a game that should come to the PS2. I mean, it's so powerful. It could totally do that. <laughs> and fortunately, it did. A few years went by, and, and we had The Sims on PS2. And I was so excited to get it. Best of all, The Sims on PS2 had this get-a-life gameplay mode where uh, you, you 
it had like a, a point to it. You know, yeah. you weren't just living. It was, you know, it's like here, first thing, move out of your mom's house, you know, and get an apartment and get a roommate and, you know, go for the house. So it had like goals. When I got to the the roommate phase, I don't even remember <laughs> the jerk's name, but it's it's just, oh, it's like the worst roommate ever. <laughs> he would go and get food and eat it and then leave his dirty dishes all over the place. You could not directly control him. You could try to tell him to do things, but he would smart off. So like I would tell him, hey, clean up your dishes. You dirty that dish, you clean it up. And I, I named my character Tom. So then you've got this little digital punk. <laughs> After I tell him, go clean up your dishes. He's like, ew, I'm not doing that. Have Tom do that. Make Tom do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think so. So what I did was the classic Sims trope of, I made him go into a room and then I took away the door. I sold it. So he's trapped in there and I took every dirty dish that was his and put it in there. And that's the only thing that was in there. No <laughs> toilet, nothing else. And this so guy was going <laughs> crazy. I mean, he would be pacing in there. He would start like banging on the walls. He's screaming and crying because he wet himself and it's filthy. And he's like, oh, simlish, simlish, whatever. <laughs> and then you have my psychopath little Sim Tom. He gets up. It's time to go to work. He's walking like two feet away from the wall that this guy's trapped behind and screaming behind. And my little psychopath goes, he pours himself some cereal and he's just eating. <laughs> the guy's screaming his head off. <laughs> oh, okay. Better go. And then he'd leave for work. <laughs> Love that story. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's why you pick up all of your dishes because otherwise I'll put you in a room and take away the door. I know. <laughs> It's all right. I used to when I when I didn't want to sim around anymore. I'd put him in the pool and I'd delete the the ladder. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm the bad one. All right. Well, <laughs> the last one that I have for you. Mm -hmm. So this this will be number five. I, I I think you've got a good story for this one. Oh yes, we've got Tifa here. Well, when we got together, he had this set and it looked just like this. It was missing Sadly. Tifa. And I was like, what the heck, Where's, where is this one? Why don't you have that one anymore? And it was one of those stories where he used to get them out and take pictures and do like little like stop animation thingies mm -hmm. with them. And he would let um, our little one play with it. And you said you think that it got mixed up in the toy box or something, like picked up with all of her other toys or something mm -hmm. like that and got broken. And so you just didn't have it anymore. So, and this was very early on in our relationship. I made it a point to complete this thing. So I found her and they actually sold her by herself Thankfully. on a card. And um, so I found her and found her complete in her little card box and everything. And I, and I gave it to him so he could complete his set. How awesome is that? She knew how much that meant mm -hmm. to me. So it was very, very cool to be able to have the full box set again. Yep. Thank you. You are welcome. As a collector, it means the world to collect a set. So very, very cool. <laughs> All right. The last one is kind of a like a together twofer. Okay. So this is um, something that started another franchise love for both of us. Hmm. Okay. Oh, my gosh. The Assassin's Creed game. With our favorite... Oh, Ezio, yes, no doubt. Brotherhood had just come out when I first started playing the Assassin's Creed games. And all I would hear is like such grand things. You know, people had such good things to say about it. And of course, we started from the very yeah. beginning well, with... I wasn't interested because I had watched a friend of mine play the very first Assassin's game and it was boring right. as all get out. And I was like, no. But... You know, we wanted to try it, so we started from the beginning, and I, it was as boring as I remember it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there was there was something lacking in it. And there were a lot of other things where it was really rough around the edges. You'd have, like, this huge open area between towns that you kind of wanted to explore. Because you're, you're out of the town, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, what's out here? But there's nothing out there. So, you know, there also, were a lot of weird things. Altair just wasn't... And he, he didn't have that characteristic to him mm -hmm. that, that Ezio had. Wow, when we started Assassin's Creed 2, I mean, this hooked me, it hooked you, it hooked your sister. Yeah. Uh, 
partially because the places that he went, like Venice and Florence, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. these were places Rome that you had gone to yeah. in real life. Yes, and, and they were accurate. Yeah, seeing as how they haven't really Scarily changed accurate. too much a lot of the, <laughs> the structures. So it was so cool. And being history buffs, you know, like we love history mm -hmm. and everything. The way it would tie the narrative into real world history, it was fascinating. It was so cool. You know, you had this fantasy element of, uh, you know, like this uh, piece of Eden artifact. And it was mixed into like real world yeah. settings, you know. And they would do uh, fun things like, like popping into pictures. And that would be part of the puzzle. Like, oh, where's the piece of Eden yeah. in this picture? But yeah, it was so much fun. And I mean, it totally won us over because Ezio was such a cool character, very charismatic. He, he uh, I mean, obviously he was so much fun. They, they carried him over yeah. into multiple games. So. They even came back into the Ezio collection later you remember on. The, Hi, it's -a me, a Mario. <laughs> oh, when you first meet his uncle, whose name is Mario, Mario, he comes up and he's like, hey, it's me. Do I know you from somewhere? Don't you recognize me? It's a me, Mario. Just little stuff like that was great. <laughs> or when he uh, talked about coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the first time Ezio tries some coffee, he's not a fan, but he has some suggestions for it. A little bitter, if you ask me. Just seems lacking somehow. I don't know. Have you considered adding sugar, maybe, or latte? I suppose it's something of an acquired taste. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, it's funny because based on the first game, I didn't know what the deal was. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, I, didn't I guess. Didn't know what the appeal was. But once we played the second one, that totally won us over and made us fans of the yes. series ever since. We have picked up every game since on console and played through all of them. Uh, some better than others. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, these, these games were the ones that got us started. And by the way, Brotherhood, it's funny because it's pretty much just like mega DLC yeah. to Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, wow. I have an honorable mention. Oh, an honorable mention. I uh -oh. do. Just because this story cracks me up too. Okay. Oh boy. It's across the pond. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. Because <laughs> I love this. <laughs> oh, so real. So, well, well, well as, as Sega Retro Gamer Boy is no longer watching this video. <laughs> I think you hit that dislike button and everything. And Celia, it still evades me. So I was, I was talking to Sega Head uh, once upon a time, and we we're talking about you know Sega games and stuff. And I'm obviously not as knowledgeable as he is. And I was talking about you know my love of Zelda games and everything, and I think the closest that I'd ever played on a on the Genesis was Landstalker, you know, to get that Zelda vibe. And he started telling me about Solil, and he was like, "Well, I think it's called like Crusader of Sinti over in the States, but it's it's really like Zelda." And the more he told me about it, and the more I started looking into it, I was like, "Oh, I really want to play that." But yes, Crusader of Sinti is stupid expensive, and he told me at the time. He's like, well, why don't I just get you a copy of this? It was released in PAL region, so mm -hmm. you can read it. It's not like you're trying to play a Japanese game and not understanding the text. And he managed to find this for, I mean, it was something like 30 or 40 yeah. pounds. Which, since then, this game, <laughs> Solil, has gone up in price over there. So, I mean, we got it at the perfect time. But... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mike's not too happy about that. In fact, I think it was like weeks after he had yeah. shipped it to us that Mike retro gamer boy let uh, Sega head know that he was looking <laughs> he for the game. And so Tom was like, uh, whoops. That's also when we learned that it was spiked in price too. Yeah. So huge shout out to Sega. Head. Thank you so much for introducing me to this. And, and thank and you for sending to copy. us instead of Mike. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Love you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I need to sit down and, and give this a proper playthrough uh, because, you know, I, I just I, I dipped into it because I was like, well, I got to see that, it. That probably makes Retro Gamer Boy even more angry than you having it is the fact that you oh. haven't played it yet. I'm so sorry, Mike. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's not even there. <laughs> nope. There. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this was... 
this, this was, was a lot of fun. Yeah. This was fun to kind of go through and see what we could pick out for mm -hmm. the other as far as memories. Um, the, this has been going around long enough that I honestly have no clue who has and who hasn't been tagged. So we um, tag you. Yeah, we always, we always <laughs> cop out anyway and throw an open tag out there. Because also, in all honesty, it's always disheartening whenever you do tag some people and then someone leaves a comment and says, Oh, I would love to do this. And it's like, well, you still can. Yeah. Just because you weren't name dropped, feel free to. Because we would love to see a video response to this. Let us know your top 10 gaming memories or, you know, gaming related memories. Because it doesn't have to just be video games if we have anything to say about it. <laughs> uh, but one last time, uh, Retro Rivals, I mean, thanks for reminding everyone. No, they're they're awesome people. Please go check them out. Uh, I know some some great videos that I've seen for this topic. Co-op of Nerds, Sega Blocks, and of course Generation Pixel. Thank you so much for the initial tag. And Nerdlings, please check out Generation Pixel anyway, as you should already be doing, because he is hosting this year, 2022's YouTuber of the Month. Woo! So get over there, show him some support, and especially show all these awesome channels some support. They're being nominated. They're usually new to you channels and everything not everyone's familiar with. Check them out. You know, help those channels grow. Get the... Uh, how did we used to say all that? I don't even remember. Get that the, was 2019. Get the exposure they need. Fun taking over hosting. Oh, yeah, totally. One month is going to be so easy. Yeah, easy peasy. It, it's actually uh, 12 months, though. It, it's the full year. Oh, a, a I'm, year. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. It's a good thing you're you're hosting now because obviously we couldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, check them out. Thanks again for the tag. Check out the videos and let us know if you have any gaming memories. And please let us know if you do a video response because we'd love to see it. So I'm going to leave it there. Like, comment, notification bell. And of course... Like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there. Hit us up on the Retro Refresh. And if we like it... We nerd it for... Stuff. G gaming memories. <laughs> All the memories. <gasps> She's unfazed. <laughs> <laughs> Because she flies around with a star all the time. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. She's on Stardust. Oh. <laughs> here, I had an honorable one just in case you didn't have a story. Oh, nice. Why didn't you do an honorable mention? Well, here. Well, basically, uh, I knew a guy through my work who made leather things. Uh, he makes really good leather masks. He makes leather holsters. He makes leather costumes. He does all kinds of amazing leather stuff. And we will put a link to him down in the description below. His name is Dustin from, I believe it's called Silver Customs or something to the effect. But anyway, I asked him if he could make a uh, COVID mask for Tom and make it look like the Zelda Majora's mask. So he did that. He made it all out of leather and painted it himself and everything. So he did an amazing job. And it's filtered so you can breathe through it. And it smells good, too, because it's leather. And on another note, uh, he did these nice, springy, soft ear loops. And despite the fact that it is all leather, including the, the spikes, there's a bit of heft to it. But this thing, this is not uncomfortable to wear. Yeah. yeah. Like, you would think that with all the leather, it would just really pull on your ears and everything mm -hmm. and just be bad. But it's not bad at all. Although I do kind of want to tell you to get over here. You're a scorpion. What? <laughs> Don't feel me yawning. It was already going. You're making weird noises, so it's like, oh, I'm keeping that. <laughs> okay, pizza's there. Thank you. Yay, now we'll talk even faster. Put it in the oven to keep it warm. I'll put you in the oven. Oh. Brought to you by, no, not really. <laughs> but this is why I'm doing this video. He bribed me with pizza. I'm your fierce deity now. <laughs> <laughs>